Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another light burn tutorial. So this one's a treat today. We're going to be taking a look at a beta of version 1.5 and a couple of the new features that are going to be included or scheduled to be included in this version. I do want to reiterate that this is a beta and it is a preview only, so functionality is subject to change by the time of release. So we're going to take a look at a couple of neat new features. We're going to take a look at some guidelines. We've got draggable guidelines that we can pull out from the rulers as well as guidelines that can be put to use as you're dragging objects around on the screen. We're going to take a look at some of the changes to the corner rounding or radius tool. Uh, we'll take a look at you know some of the how it works today and then some of the changes that were implemented to not only make corner radiusing easier, corner rounding easier on closed shapes, but also be able to apply corner rounding to uh, new shapes, um, uneven and arced lines and just, you know, something other than your standard polygon. So definitely some big powerful changes there. And then lastly, we'll take a look at a new feature that Lightburn is calling Taper Warp. And what Taper Warp looks to be is it looks to be automatically correcting uh, or applying, you know, a skew or a, or, or a percentage of correction based on a tapered item. So think tumblers, where your top of your tumbler and your bottom of your tumbler are not the same diameter. And when you engrave a standard image, there needs to be a slight correction applied so that it looks proper as the diameter of your cylinder changes. So we'll take a look at all of those real quick here and give you guys a bit of a, of a sneak peek. So let's start with a fresh canvas and first thing we're going to look at is the guides. The ability to drag guides out from rulers has been a staple in a lot of image editing programs for a while and this is an immensely useful feature that Lightburn is now implementing. So if you'll watch my cursor, as I move my cursor just above the upper ruler, my icon will change from a pointer to my little targeting and I can click and drag out as many rulers as I want and drop them on the screen or as many guidelines as I want and drop them on the screen. Once they're there, I can easily move them around. I can place them whatever I need. I can drag out from the left side and do the same thing. And there you go. So we've now got guides placed on the screen that I can use for laying out my projects. And again, you'll see that this created a tool layer. So the tool layer is not output to your laser. So when you save this or when you uh, send this to your laser, this entire layer is ignored when it generates your G code um, or when it streams to your laser. So you don't need to worry about having to come back and delete all these guides before, um, before burning. You can turn the guides on and off easily by showing, clicking the little show toggle on the layers uh, panel. So I'm going to put a couple images on, or a couple shapes on the screen here, and let's just throw some random stuff. Okay. So now taking a look at any of these shapes, I can move these around like I always have. Nothing's changed. Now watch the magic when I hold the alt key. So you see my blue guides that pop up? Those blue guides will actually snap me to the various points and tangents and uh, alignments with other shapes on the screen, as well as uh, quickly kind of enhance the snapping feature as I move around some of the guides on the screen. So if I want to quickly drop this in the center of the square, you can see I've got, and let me get rid of some of these other guides just so that we've got some clarity. Okay. So as I move this around, hold Alt, and you can see that it quickly snaps to center. It snaps to my tangent to center, snaps my tangent to the side. Um, so as I move along, it just finds the next major feature of a shape and gives me a guide and snaps me right to it. So that is awesome. And it works for any of the shapes, obviously, as I move them around, you can see it's automatically snapping where it needs to. 
So this is, uh, you know, it's not a complete replacement for, or maybe it is, depending on how you like to work. Um, your alignment tools up here still work. So at the top of the screen, if I want to align center horizontally and then align center vertically, those still work fine. I can align left, I can align right. Um, so those are all fine. Um, but, you know, this just gives me a way to do it while I'm in the middle of my workflow. I don't have to stop and come up here and click an icon uh, on the toolbar. It just works. So that's cool. So that's definitely um, a huge win uh, for those looking for guidelines in uh, and uh, and auto guides in Lightburn. So, all right. Next up, take a look at corner radius. So corner radius, and we'll start with just the most basic shape. Drop a square out here. Corner radius. At first, you can use it as you always do. You click the little radius icon on the toolbar. I want a radius at 10 pixel. And I come in here and I click my corner and I can individually select the corners that I want to apply the radius to. That hasn't changed. What has changed, however, is now we have, if you see this little blue circle, this little blue dot up here on the top right corner of my square, as I hover over that, my again, my cursor changes. Now, if I click and drag that horizontally, that gives me a, an automatic corner radius on all four corners all the way around the shape. That's awesome. However, to go one step further, if I drag vertically, I now get interior corners. I get a, a negative radius. Um, so I had had a, uh, somebody asked me one point how to do a radius, um, a, a concave uh, radius in there. And so I had done a video, a quick tips reply showing that. And you know, this is just so much faster than the old way. It's, it's not even funny. Um, so again, you can do a positive or you can do a negative corner radius just by dragging that little blue circle up there uh, through the shape. And it'll, you know, obviously it'll just go to the constraints. Um, and stop so you know it this is this is just really cool all right now in addition to that one of the more powerful new features is let's say I've got arcs so I've got an arc on the screen and I want to just generally okay so now the radius tool will let me apply a radius say to this point here so I'm gonna choose my radius tool. I've got a radius set for five, and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click that point right there, and you see it applies the radius. So this is something that wasn't uh, available prior to this, and it's a, uh, from what I understand, a fairly um, you know, robust enhancement to the way that the corner rounding uh, tool works. All right, the last feature I wanna take a look at now is gonna be the taper warp. So what the taper warp is going to be, let me drag the Lightburn logo in here and we're going to trace this. Okay. All right. So the taper warp is going to apply a, a, a basically a perspective um, to this that will allow it to look proper when you're dealing with something like a tumbler where your top and your bottom diameters are different. So if I come up here to the laser tools menu and I choose taper warp. So object top is top. Um, you know, obviously you can change the orientation. And then what you're gonna do is measure your top diameter and then measure your bottom diameter and your height. So let's say my height is 300, my top diameter is 100, and just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna go a little bit extreme here and I'm gonna say 50. And so what you'll notice here is that it actually skewed the image and gave it uh, almost a perspective so that as your image is engraving, whether it's on the larger diameter or the smaller diameter, it keeps the image relatively square on the workpiece so that when you view it completed, uh, that there's not a, uh, 
a you know warping of the image uh, on the final workpiece. So definitely a um, an, a nice new feature for those who like to engrave a lot of water bottles, Yetis, cups, glasses, whatever, anything that's got a you know fairly uniform taper to it from top to bottom this will allow you to make that adjustment you know right from within light burn without having to take it out to an external application uh, to make those changes there are obviously a lot of other features coming uh, in 1.5 a lot of them are more machine specific or you know come into effect when you're getting ready to burn um, and, and getting the jobs finalized that's beyond the scope of this video just because the machine I'm working on now is not actually hooked up to my laser uh, it's in a different part of the house so you know if you've got any questions obviously you know you can post them in the comments below uh, you know make sure if you don't have light burn go grab it get familiar with it uh, one of the best in my opinion one of the best uh, laser softwares on the market today but just remember that this is beta functionality that I'm showing. So if you go download Lightburn today, you will not see most of these features that I have shown you. Um, they are really just meant to be a teaser, a sneak peek <clears throat> for what is coming in uh, 1.5 or what's expected to be coming in 1.5. So until next time, uh, definitely like uh, this video and subscribe to my channel if you are not already. Obviously, it helps the algorithm get my videos seen. And um, until next time, we'll talk to you later.